I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another teacher profile. We're speaking with Heidi Gaynor, who is one of two teachers of the year for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So you are a math teacher at Sutter Middle School. Yes, I am. So what are the expectations uh, of middle school math students? Middle school math students, uh, seventh, I teach seventh and eighth grade, and uh, they uh, are expected to learn quite a bit of stuff at that age. It's amazing, um, from ratios and proportions to solving um, simple equations to complex equations um, to systems of equations. The Pythagorean theorem, which is one of my favorite. Um, there's some geometry of volume and surface area sprinkled in there, uh, as well as some little bit of statistics and uh, learning how to read, you know, uh, bar graphs and uh, scatter plots, and and um, also a lot of graphing involved with uh, learning about slope and um, those kind of things. All right, so that's all very intimidating for someone who just came from sixth grade. <laughs> yes, it is. So how do you convince these students that you can do this, that you have a math mindset that you don't realize you have? Uh, well, I convince them. Um, they start out not believing me, but when they first kind of walk in my room, even at orientation day, and they express that either they're nervous or they're not a fan of being math, um, of math or it's their least favorite subject, um, I usually tell them my goal for the year is to get them to like math just a little bit. Um, and I... I create a really, or try to create a really safe environment where uh, mistakes are ex expected. We respect them, we share them out, we learn from each other. Uh, students work together quite a bit. They're, um, we spend time learning what that looks like and how to be productive with that. And then uh, they spend a lot of time working um, in their small groups, which gives them that safe environment instead of everything being displayed as a whole class. Uh, so they build really good rapport with one another and then I usually am jumping in and eavesdropping and um, they learn that they can ask me questions but they know that I'm going to often come back with more questions for them. Mm -hmm. um, so I think um, really creating that safe environment and um, having fun with it. We play, um, we do a lot of games and um, mazes and um, fun hands-on tasks and kind of take the, the pressure of, hey, that I really am learning these complex math problems, um, but sometimes they forget that, wow, math class is already over kind of thing. So teaching yeah. them without them even realizing exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you really, it's, but it's hard to get over that intimidation factor, isn't it? It is, very much so. And um, so sometimes it takes a longer um, for some students and really, um, they really don't want to share and don't want to be a voice out. Um, I often have lunch time where uh, my room is open, so I try to encourage um, all students, but especially ones I kind of get a sense that are a little more not um, certain about their own skills or kind of, it's, it boils down to lack of confidence in math. Mm -hmm. And um, so working with them in that level, um, making sure I touch base with them in class, but not making it apparent that it's, um, for any other reason then I'm just there to support them. Mm. Um, and just continually kind of being an advocate for them and pushing them um, in a positive way. Uh, I, I probably sound like a, a, like a broken record in my classroom because I say over and over again that if I'm more concerned about the kids who are not asking questions than the ones that are. Mm -hmm. So um, really try to encourage them. Because when you're making that sixth grade to seventh grade jump in math, you have real high expectations of them being critical thinkers. Yes. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of them, that's, that's something you have to learn how to do. It's not just something that you instinctively know. Right. So what do you, what do, you do to enforce that to kind of help them with that? And that's true. They, um, they struggle with that and they'll be like, I know what I'm doing, but I can't explain it. And I think it, it boils down to coming um, to just, we keep practicing it. We, um, I try to model it. Um, fellow classmates model it. We do um, a lot of times before we're going to share some of um, like the explanations and the dialogue, they'll have a chance to tap into a partner um, or um, their group before we share out whole. So if maybe they didn't have something of their own to share, they can pull something from their group and share out, mm -hmm. um, which then gives them the confidence or if they had a thought and they thought they were wrong, but their classmates shared it at their group, then they feel a little more, 
hey, you know what, I wasn't wrong. And so it just, um, it can be a slow process at the beginning of the year, but I think if we take that time and we're patient with it, then um, it's, it starts to blossom in about January where they really start mm -hmm. to uh, feel a little more confident and, and are willing to, you know, we do a lot of like a, um, sentence frames, like here's how you can um, start something of things around the room, like uh, what kind of questions you can ask each other if you're stuck. Um, really a, a lot of supports around helping them know where to start their dialogue. So how do you work with those students who, you know, they'll say, when am I going to use this? In, I'm sure you've never heard that as a teacher, never. right? Yeah. Mm -mm. So, so how, do you, how, do you, how do you work with those students? Because, you know, we've all said it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, it's, I, I'll be honest, there are some topics that make it a little more uh, challenging. Yeah. Uh, I think what it boils down to is a, a, a lot of what we're doing in math is um, critically thinking and problem solving. Um, learning to um, persevere through a challenge and think of different approaches uh, to tackle something. And so I often try to share with them that although this specific math concept might not be um, in your future based on what you decide to do, but the skills that we have to use to tackle it can be applied in all areas of life. And I think um, really showing that that connection can get them to buy into some of those topics where if you're not gonna you know, be a math teacher or you're mm -hmm. not gonna be an engineer, um, we're still going to always have to problem solve, and although computers can do a lot of the calculating, they can't do the analyzing and the critical thinking that needs to come out of the results of the calculations. And, and you know, in dealing with middle middle school students, well, all students, I suppose, you know, you're not only teaching math, but you really have to be aware of their their social and their their emotional well-being. And and what are some of the things you do to kind of be be on the lookout for you know, things, and what do you apply for the students to kind of help them along? Yeah, 12 and 13, they're, uh, that's their biggest social time of their lives as well as kind of a hormonal roller coaster that they go through. Um, uh, it make it really important that I get to know them as a person um, and let them know that they are, they are more than just that math student in my classroom. So I take time at the beginning of the year to get to know them through different, um, um, uh, we do some written correspondence back and forth and I give them um, some, um, Pro little mini projects to kind of share who they are and then kind of display for others to see. Um, we uh, check in every week about our weekend and they get to share things that have been a highlight of their weekend or maybe not such a highlight if they're willing to share. Um, really trying to build that sense of community and giving them that opportunity to talk. Mm -hmm. Middle school kids need to talk, they need to be social and for us to expect them to walk into our classroom and be silent for 52 minutes is setting us up for failure. So um, teaching them how to be on task and focused on like the math conversation, but knowing that um, finding that balance where, hey, at the beginning of class, if you finished a task, there are times when you can still um, have that little social piece. Mm -hmm. um, and then learning that they're not gonna always have a good day. Um, I often tell people that I just ride the roller coaster with the middle schoolers and know that some days they'll come in and they'll love me, the next day they may not. Um, be sensitive to what's going on in their lives if they're willing to share. Um, it definitely gives us a perspective of what's going on. Um, or if they don't wanna share, but you're like, hey, you're not yourself today. I think just acknowledging that, they're like, hey, they actually do see me. It's not just you know, doing the work. Right. Um, and I also tell them, even like when we take a, an exam in class, it's like, this is one day out of the year. It doesn't define who you are. It doesn't define what kind of a student you are. It doesn't define your math ability. It's one day. You might have been at the top of your game, and maybe that day you weren't. So yeah. I think some um, days are better than others. Exactly. And so um, learning to recover from those, I think, are important. And finally, uh, what's it mean to you to be a teacher of the year? Uh, it's quite an honor. Uh, I have finished my 20th year, and I've worked with some amazing. Um, colleagues, um, I follow a lot of educators in math blogs and, and research and um, was just pretty honored to be acknowledged um, as uh, the yeah. Teacher of the Year for our district and represent. Well, congratulations to Thank you. you. And it was nice speaking with you. We've been speaking with Heidi Gaynor, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me.